So let's say uh, I make some list, okay, and then I'll be making a data frame. Then I'll show you some nested dictionaries. Um, with that, how you can create a data frame, and then you'll be given some tasks to complete it. Okay. So today in the class, even you will be having the task to complete and to show whether you can make because proceedings to be very difficult if you don't understand the things. Okay. So uh, okay. let's take some things from here. So let's say if I'm having a list of names. This is name, and I'm taking some of the subjects, right? I'll be giving some short names, second of the time. So let's take in the range of 60s. Okay, done. Now I would be creating dictionary with this. List. Okay, and that would be marks. I'll be giving name. Would be equals to n. Then physics would be equals to p. Then chemistry would be equals to c. And then maths would be equal to m. Oops. That's it. Done. Right. Now, uh, all the things you have seen, right? I have reported. Okay, one thing is left that is your three because now, as far you're coming to your end of the classes, you need to learn all the libraries. Okay, all right. Now, I'll be taking some DAF that would be a data frame. So, I'll be taking it as data frame, and the same the data what I'm using here is equals to marks that is my list oh, sorry uh, that is my dictionary okay so i get to print this df and i get this reserve that is your name physics chemistry and mathematics right the things what i have written in the list is has been written in in the uh, you know like 2d formats you can say um, all right and which one? And that 2D format is having some shapes and some, you know, some rows, some columns, some Xs, some index, all these things. Okay. All right. So now, if I need to access up the number of, you know, like, uh, students, what are the student names? Hmm? I need to access them. Student names. So what I am doing? I have to access the name column and this one we need to access through the names and if you need to go through some of the like uh, basic things right we need to go through the indexing of the name columns right so before going all the things like whatever the data types and things in the numpy when and in the simpy and all what we are learning first we need to go through the additions what we say is as like to add some rows, to add some columns and like that. Okay. So let's say if I, in a data frame, the very first thing or not the very first thing, like it's a, 
manual like if you want to add a row in your data <coughs> so adding rows so what do you need to do at that time so let's say new row you are adding a new row and you can give it as a name just a minute So let's say I take a new subject as E and we are taking the same. So things should be similar, right? You know, like uh, the column names should be same. So physics, I take some 89, I take chemistry and I take 98 and I take maths, I take 90. like that and now the thing is that you need to append this row to the data frame no. appending this row to your data frame so this is the most important thing you need to do it now I'll say df of your uh, sorry exact the df is equals to df dot append and then what you need to append is the new row and Obviously, the indexing, so what you can see in the previous one is 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, you can, uh, if you uh, add something, your indexing might change, right? So, I need to ignore the index. And that would be equal to true. And now, your df looks something like this. Oof. Okay. But the mathematics, I have entered 90. Right, so that should be some new column basically then you would be getting some data so what I have done there is something wrong where it is the problem name physics chemistry maths no oh, new row I haven't uh, mentioned anything because in the maths it is as it is and the E1 is not having any value in the maths and the rest cases in the zero what you can find there you need to make a list of the things in the mathematics if you are making one two three four i've not entered anything only the last one e is having something inside there that is 90.0 so you are getting the thing says okay anyone wants to say anything someone like was on sql on library yeah without the sql on how are you making how you be completing your algorithms you know you have to learn like if you are learning regressions you know so for that for your projects you need to go through the SQLM without SQLM you cannot complete your projects even. so I will be making two projects and in that we'll be using SQLM okay All right, so this is like how you can add your things in your rows. Columns are easy to add. Okay, these these are the rows. Like columns, if you know, you need to write columns. You'll be taking it as like this. Sir. Yeah. Sir, we have to write math in place of mathematics. Uh, so that we... Uh... Uh, here NAN is printed so uh, when we hmm. write maths in place of mathematics it doesn't hmm. give the number yeah if I write maths what will happen these values will be changed something like if I write maths these NAN will be changed right there the values will be coming yes sir yes sir right so that you have to do I haven't done because if I do right now so there will be some problems so okay leave it Right. 
let's see. Uh, so if you need to remove it, you have to remove by writing the digits and all. You can make it deleted. Otherwise, you can add it. Uh, let me add it this one. So here, what is there? Mathematics. What I have done is a new row, not a new row. This is got a new column here. This E is a row. 89, 98, and the 90 has got something here, like I think something has shifted somewhere. What has shifted? 68, 65, 87, 88, 69. And where this 90 has came? What's this here? Alright, uh, let's do a bit change here. I'll leave it as, a, as it is. Mathematics. So I need to write it as max. So this will not be take a new column because mathematics is a new, uh, you know, like words. So it takes a new column. If I run this this time, I see. I see it should be deleted the columns. Okay. Uh, cool. Let's do one thing. Oh, it's fine so see yes sir this is what i want to say yeah yes sir. so the fourth one is to be excluded out hmm. okay so you can uh, remove it that what i was saying that uh, how many times i'll be running it will be adding on ending on okay. so this is like addition of the rows now if you need to add some columns that would be easy columns are the easiest So this would be like, uh, let's say, if I'm adding some CS subjects and I'd be giving a list of the things, like uh, let's say 98, 79, 86, 65, how many is it? 1, 2, 3, 7. Okay. Seems right, some 7 values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are your columns, and that is VF equals to this. And I get the column name, sorry, values over there. Okay, so like this. So, this is now your data frame looks like. Okay, now see, every data frame have can have lot number of rows and can have lot number of columns too. Okay, now if you want to see the first five rows or the last five rows so for that we have some two different keywords not keywords we call as the functions call as your head and tail okay who is there okay so heads and tails okay so what we can do is we can write df of head to get the first five rows so that is still zero one two three four you will be getting right and that is nan okay so what you can do is df dot uh, is null you'll be getting one true result here so na has been filled okay and let's say it's a filling results as 90 is fine if it is 90 90.0 null values are not good so we use this done okay now if i again run this i'll get this head as okay now values are there fine all right now so what i've used is you know like easiest now you can uh, understand what i have done in place and all just to be done Okay, so these are the first five rows. Similarly, you can get access to the last five rows using the tail and these are the things like two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and you can use the drop duplicates too. If it comes, so, this one. So now, oh, it's not working in place. I 
in the rows you need to mention. How is that? that happens. So you can see the tails and the heads, right? Now with this, if you want only one head, only one tail, you can write in the parenthesis one, two, three, whatever you want, right? Uh, okay. Removing all these things, there is something called a sample. Like if it is a long data set, now this is a very small, right? Some seven rows are there, and so one, two, three, four, five columns are there, 35 elements, okay? So if you have a long data set and at that time you need to get to understand like a very small info of that data set, you can use a sample of that, right? If I can use here sample, the sample by default gave you one, right? So if you want five samples, you can use five samples, it is four samples, you can take four samples from there. Okay. And the rest thing as it is 2D, you can uh, go with the numpy, whatever you have learned, like df.size and you know, df.columns df dot uh, index df dot values all the things right the values are there index names are there and all or uh, df dot xs whatever the memory storage it is using ds dot memory uh, usage with index if you don't want then index equals to false Right, so only without index, what are the storage it is using, and other things. Okay. So these are the things what you can go through the very basics of the pandas, right? Size, columns, index, values, and rows. Rows basically you can go on, right? Okay, now so if I make a, a data frame again, and this time I will be using some location, some different uh, functions like IAT and AT. Someone wants to ask something. R bind function to add rows like an R programming. No, not like that. You can use concatenate. R bind function, you know, like concatenate function is there to add two different, uh, you know, like data frames. Is that you are asking? Like if you have two data sets, you can add it using the concat function. Oh, no, sir, I was just asking about a single row. Single row. For single, yes, row, single row, you can use append function. And sir, can you repeat the uh, function that is used to get a small sample? This is, this one is this. Oh, where is it? dot sample from any data set you can take sample and if uh, by default it gives you only one sample if you need to go with more than one sample you can take one two three four whatever we'll be getting okay like that with the samples you'll be getting this okay uh where was i hmm. memory user webinar okay so uh, let's create a new data frame Writing my index equals to four five six, and then columns equals to A B C. Splitting the columns, so D F looks this A B C having four five six as the index value zero 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 two three zero four one and ten twenty thirty as the values. Okay. Now, if I want to see, guys, see, uh, using pd dot at and pd dot iat, so that is your pd dot. Lot of functions are there. You'll be getting it now. Come, come quickly. Tap, 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 tap. Okay. It's not coming. Okay. At. Now. Okay. So what you can see is there are a lot of functions. So, AT, some standard functions are only given as an input over there, right? So, <clears throat> what I said it was the concat, like 
or adding two different data frames. Okay, leave it. So I need to find like uh, what is the values of the first index. Okay, so that I can easily access through the rows. So basically now you are learning how to access the rows, right? So to access the rows, you have two different ways. Sorry, not four different ways. You can go with lock, you can go with i lock. You can go with at and you can go with i at. Okay. These are the ways of uh, locating your index. Uh, sorry, the rows. So now I would be taking dot locate and would be using the first one. So first is four. So you'd be getting a series now. If you like rewind yesterday's class, you'll be getting that this is a series which name is four and it is of the fourth row, oh sorry, of the first row, A equals 2, B equals 2, and your C equals, what is it, 3. Okay. So this is what we are getting there, the name, the data type of 64 bits and like that, okay. These are the things. Now, so you identify the things that whenever you have been asked to uh, go through a column to get a series, what you will be doing is locating this. For a rows, you can get a series for a... Uh, so when you are accessing any rows and columns, you should be knowing that uh, you would be getting the results in the format of series because you have used one bracket. If you rewind the numpy classes, right? One bracket stands for the series, one dimensions, and in the pandas, as I said, you only have up to the 3D things, right? So uh, the 3D world we are not going to learn because that is a panels, okay? That is not included for the other things. So 2D is your data frames, okay, and this would be working. So, if you want to find the 2D data, what you will be doing is df dot locate two different brackets. Sorry, here and four. Now you'll be getting a data frame. I, I think it is clear, right? Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, what is the different? Mm -hmm. Yeah, ask. Hello, can. Sorry. So what is the difference between the i lock or uh, the lock only lock loc or i loc i stands for indexing index locations like see okay lock of 4 is giving you 0 to 3 right but what is 4 the first index right so if i say dot i lock of the first index you get the same thing understood Yes. This is the difference. Same goes with the AT, at and all. So if I want to get a specified row and a column pair, like I want to see what is there in the fourth, uh, fourth of B. That is this fourth of B. I found if I want to get this right, so I can I can easily get this like a, a DF of this B. I have different ways for finding this B and uh, this of four. So you can get it that there is two. Right? But still, if I want to get it through different uh, functions, I can use df dot at. What is there at this fourth of this b? Clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Fourth of this b, and I'll get the result that this is two. If I need to change this, I want to change. I can use easily at this, and you can write any numbers over there to get it changed. Okay. So these are the ways of getting them. Or you can go with the index uh, locations to IAT to get the things even. And you can go with the DF dot IAT. Now if you are using I, you have to use every index numbers. Like 4 is on 0 and B, B where it B goes, B goes at 0 and 1. So you get the result 2. Clear? All right, so this is how it goes. If I call the uh, previous DF, here, yeah, the first one, chemistry, physics, maths, and all, you know, so getting the things over there, maximum, minimum values, okay? All right, so this is uh, what uh, exactly a data frame consists of, okay? Now, we'll be going with a lot of things, but before that, 
I'll uh, show you something like with dictionary is how you can make a data frame. If you have an instant dictionary or if you have a good dictionary, you can go with. So what you can see now is basically uh, kind of a squared, okay, Indian squared. The players are there, the player names are there, the span are there, the matches, the innings, the numbers, runs, highest, scores, average, and all the things, okay. So this is a uh, dictionary here, what I'm having, and I done this. Now I'll be making a data frame using this and then I could get the index and I'm going to get the values even to find the things easily. So if I want to see, now you would be answering like I would be asking the questions and you would be answering now how because to see it, how you get to learn. Now uh, let's say this is df and I'm making this data frame. and this is being done so this is the data okay all right uh, you can see the things clearly if i zoom in yeah so this is just one line and <coughs> and you can find the things here Okay, all the rows and columns. If you don't want to give anything, you can use np.nat instead of this. You can use np.nat too. Okay. Uh, Anshuman saying, how did you load this data set? See, uh, this data set is not loaded. This is being made. So, this is a player. This is a basically a dictionary where I have a key player. And this was a task given to a batch, previous batch, but you guys, uh, this was a task given to the Python batch. Okay, so they have created this, and in the dictionary, and that could be usable for us to make a data set. Right? So inside one key, you have a lot of uh, values. Okay, inside one span, you have a lot of values. In the matches, you have things. In the, a lot of things are there. So all the keys stands for the here as the player name and all the keys stands for the columns and their values goes here as the a tab tabular format right so in place of this all these dots and this hyphens you can use this uh, np.nan if you don't need to write over the ad we need to give null values but we don't write nan everywhere right because when we, when the normal man non a non programmer sees a data set how he would be understanding like, what is nan Right, so for them, this hyphen stands nothing. Right, for us, this hyphen stands none, null value. Okay, so basically, this S Nadim has not given any average score here. Or this Sadhul Thakur, I guess, he's not having any average scores. Okay. Fine, this is the thing right now. Okay, now with this data set, my first question is okay, you from your, your side, anyone could answer. So I would be taking like till now whatever we have learned, I'm asking about it. Okay. Now if I ask you, right, um, like, hmm. I want to locate uh, R A Jadeja. This one. How would I do? So using the add function, sir, you'll add four and the column name. Hmm. Yeah. So you say what should I write? D F. Dot add. Oh, yeah. Dot add. Yeah. Square brackets. Third bracket. Two square brackets. Two square brackets. Yes. Okay. Then four, comma, four. span. Why span? I only want to locate this one. This. 
when it comes yeah okay so a player then player then why player no no sir see see guys see i want to locate this ravindra jadeja right so this what i'm saying see i have selected all these not only the ravindra jadeja i have selected all these i want to locate this all these sir then i think so it's only four then yeah it's only so you need to only write df dot locate not four right so if you use four like this would be a series so that was a data frame so it would be a double square brackets and then four and then these are the things right okay now uh, with the columns you are pretty like intelligent to write with the columns add or something will be taken with that okay now see guys okay now if i have been given a data set okay and i said like to exclude the results of ratiman shah let's say okay so is it difficult right to go through and then check like what is the index number of this ratiman shah if if think like if we have a data set which is having almost 10000s of rows okay so at that time if you need to go through some columns then it would be very difficult right to see the index numbers what are the index number of this ratiman shah uh, and then you are going to locate this will it be difficult yes or no very difficult i i from my side i say it's difficult right so at that time what we know what should we do hmm any guesses what you can tell any solution for this let's say i have given you a data set which is having some 9000 rows and this ritiman saha i know that the ritiman saha uh, comes at the index number something around 6500 so you, will you be going through all the rows and finding where is this ritiman saha hmm? not like exactly that right so at that time you have two different methods the first method that it would be very helpful if your index numbers are your player names right so basically you do, did not have to find the index numbers you can just write locate this player name that's it you will be getting the things am i right So you guys, nothing to do. Okay. Instead of that, what you can do is you have read numpy. So what you can do is you can create list of all the players. As numpy is very quick, right? So what you can do is you can create list of all the players from the columns like this. So what you can do is uh, df of the player names. So p l a y e r s, and you know you would be getting a series. I think s s s not there. Only p is there. so this gives you player so all these player names are there now you can find that where this is equal equals to i am taking a short name right now uh, let's say s nadim is there so s nadim so where is this s nadim right so what you can do is np dot where if you don't know exactly np dot where this is equal to s nadim oh it's not giving a player Uh, results over there. Just a minute. Hmm. Do we have written something wrong? Just a minute. D F of player. Player. Ah, very good. Series has no attribute to array. Very good. df of player you are getting the results okay and uh, you can here only you can locate equal equals to something like s nadim or the values df dot player equal equals to oh, what i wrote there was s nadim i option and then you can find at which position you are getting true result So I am getting at ninth, so its index number is ninth, right? 
like that. So this will be quite difficult. So what I suggest to you, the best way is, if I know that my index values are my player names, it would be very helpful. I don't have to do all these equals equals and putting all the brackets and all, right? So at that time, what I'll do is, that is called as very, this is very important method actually, because in a different data set, when you are getting an unknown data set, you have to go through according to your data set, right? You have to go through once what is there, what exactly the questions you are getting and how you are going to solve those things, right? So you need to go through this. So that is a term called as setting index values, index positions values and all, okay? So there what you will do is df would be equals to df dot set your index to what player, cool? When you run this, you see your df. Now this, is it fine? Now it is very fine, right? Now you don't have any uh, problem regarding locating one, locating four, locating this and all 80 of four and this is this. You have player names, you have columns, like you have attributes, you have your players, right? You want to see Rohit Sharma strike rate, you write RG Sharma strike rate, you'll be getting it. Very cool, see? Like I want to see Rohit Sharma strike rate, so I'll be ready. RG Sharma strike rate of RG Sharma. So that could be like, uh, what is that? SR I guess the strike rate 59.25 so if I don't know the player name or like if I don't know the index name uh, na like index number of the player I would have to go through like Rohit Sharma where is the index value I find the index value and then we are going to locate this so which one is easy this one or that one the previous one I guess this from your side which one you feel easy so this one okay. mm, obviously because things are very much clear in this one. In the last methods, like here also it is not very difficult. Sometimes this doesn't work. In very rare cases, 0.1%, very less. Now, this one is also not bad. Where it is, where is it? Okay, I had the letter, I think. Like NP of where and all locating through this. But when this does not work, that works. In the last one method, right? Because that works in every cases. But that is uh, quite lengthy. Okay. All right, so you have seen this, right? Okay. Now, how to set your index? How to get the values? Okay. Now, uh, see, guys. Uh, if I have a question, right? Like, uh, if I say you, like, and see, uh, is that one right? So I want to see uh, what is the complete uh, data of S that one. How would you write now this time? the same function but this time we are going to use s the one mm -hmm. as an argument yeah so df would be like this s the one and what is the problem space or something let me see s d h a w n n space issues oh sorry yeah so we are getting this right now Okay, span matches innings. If you don't write the two ones, you'll be getting the indexing. So that is also fine, no problem for that too. Okay, so it's easy. Uh, you are getting it right now. Okay, okay, clear. Moving ahead. Okay, now if you want to see of or uh, what are your column names? Now, now you are having one, two, three, nine. Uh, okay, six, nine, twelve, some fourteen, fifteen columns. Okay, but if you have a long data set. Now you would be going through one football data set, like FIFA data set. There you have 52 columns, no, more than 52, I guess. 56 or 58 columns are there, okay? So in those areas, how would you be uh, getting your uh, column names? If you, if, you, if you have been asked to print all the column names. Yeah. So for that, the function is your df dot all the columns. And you get this index okay sometimes you can get the column values that's all but values whenever you will be using values you know any time when you will be using values you, you your data would be suddenly changed to numpy okay 
Now in those cases when you want to solve something through numpy you can change the things in the values and then you can use something else okay like that so this was the good data set now i'm going to load the netflix data set uh, just a minute let me download that where in the drive i have it okay and uh, you guys can make this in the csv format too right you can uh, save this in csv format and like see your df to underscore of csv and you can make it as like bracket uh, data dot csv like this and this data is saved i guess so there you come to your files and if i share this to you so in your drive you can see this the cricket dot csv have been created some seconds ago and if you open you'll get this data and you can download in csv format in excel so you can open this okay Okay, so now I'll be just a minute taking up the Netflix data where it is. Netflix. So see guys, uh, I'm showing you how you are going to upload. So when you have a data set, when you download it even from the drive, you have to upload this from the downloads. You need to go through the uploadations, where it is, where it is. Netflix data set, can you see this? Yeah, here it is. So Netflix data set, Netflix.csv and I'll click on upload. That has been done. Coming to back to your uh, files. This is going to be dropped. Here. okay all right so uh, now you have to load a data set right so loading data sets now so this is data set of Netflix so I'll be saying uh, at df of n at df n <coughs> let's it be let it be df even okay so this would be pd dot read underscore sorry read underscore csv file because it is a csv file so i'll be taking csv and this is file name is netflix you get tab netflix.csv and this df dot having a sample of the data and this is your netflix.csv some small samples okay so what you can see there in your data set is a show id the type the title the director the cast country uh, why this is China? Let me change this. Okay, United States. All right, fine. Any else? Uh, this is a small. Fine. So tie another day. Okay, fine. Release your date, added rating, durations so listed in and descriptions of the things. Okay. It's like cool. Netflix data set is very good. Will the CSV will save in CWD? Uh, just a minute. We'll see. All the methods are there from where to where you can change csv dictionary excel feather gp ht ht yeah hdf is there then uh, yeah, html json and all these only these methods are there sir i was asking if it was saved in the current working directory yeah current working directory because it is uh, obviously it is saved in there only so if we want to set a location from there, so we have to specify the location and then... No, see, for... Uh, okay, you are asking at this, right? Like, so, right, like now, my current working directory is this. Sorry. Uh, one second. OS. Okay, okay. 
so like here okay so whatever the files i from here if i uh, like export like to this or to anything like html in whatever format it will be stored in this okay in this area from here you can download and store in your hard disk right okay any doubts more if you want to change you can change from here only using chdir and you can write any other path if you want to change your directories directly from there okay uh, so this is your data set okay now you need to go through for any data set from now onwards whatever the data set you will be loading the first thing is to get the info of your data set So info said that there are total 6,234 entries and it starts from 0 to 6,233. Uh, 6, data columns are total 12. The column names are there. Non-null count are there. Non-null count that means uh, if this is having 5758. Five, so after 5758, if you subtract the 6234 minus 5758, five, the rest are the null values. Okay. So objects and the data types have been given, memory usage has been given, okay. Alright, so this is your info of your data set. And that is important to go through anytime. In your projects also, when you will be making it, you have to show the very first thing that what data set you are making. Okay. Info, informations of your data set. And then, if you need to go through some, uh, you know, like statistics, statistical inputs so for that time you can go with describe <coughs> sorry describe of your so all the integers and float values of the columns would be given some count mean standard deviations minimum 25 50 and 75 percentile values and the max this is also uh, like in r also if you go through you'll be getting this like the statistics the similar things are there. that is having different word but things are there same just a minute So these are the things, all right. Now all the columns, all the index values. So see, zero two six two three three, all the columns. All these are the things. Okay. Now it will be easier for you to see the things. Okay. So how many null values are there? This much. Okay, so you're gonna get a heat map. Wait on that. So Boolean results come here. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'll be using my color. This is good actually. So. So director uh, value is having a lot of null values from here. What you can see, it's getting very. Um, so what is that? What is that? Ocean detected. Yeah, fine. So there are these much null values. Okay, and rating I guess one, two. How many are there? Ten. Ten are there. 0, 2, 2, 97 and 594 other values are there over there you can see this okay then the data types of this you can easily go here dot d types to access the thing of sorry s has been there so all the data types you can easily access okay so these are the things uh next is like uh, you need to go with the apply column to tomorrow we'll be exploring this data set okay now i'll be giving you that apply column how to work on apply apply a function that is important okay like let's say if i have a data frame i'm making it there like pd dot uh, 
data frame and I make it as 4 cross 9. Tomorrow you will be having class, okay? And columns, if I say yes, A and B. But DEF would be this A B which is which will be having 49, 49, 49, and 49, right? That is the data frame. Now, now if I want to apply a complete function to all the data uh, to all the values of your data set, you can use apply. Like if I want to apply the square root, so I can find np dot sqrt. So all the square root will be given to me, right? That is two and three of the four and nine. If I want to find the sum, so I can say df dot apply. And I can find np dot sum, and I can get the sum here, like 12 and 27. Very clear, okay? Right. So if I bring the first one now, the last question to you all, and then tomorrow we'll be again heading to other things, okay? If I come back here with this data. I'm not taking all these right now, okay, only with the previous ones. So if I come here in the DF, so now DF is this. Now can you tell me if I want to calculate like which student has got the most number of, uh, like who has got the most percentage? That's it. The easiest thing I'm asking. Who has got the more percentage? How you are going to get? Quick. Any answers? Sir, I think uh, you need to use the LOC command to find and also the max command in that column. Okay, so how? So, uh, two lines of code. Say df dot LOC then. Uh, the column we need to find the percentage physics chemistry and maths all three sir yeah like a b c and d four students are there who has scored the most percentage that's it the only thing you yeah. want see numpy you have read something when we have 2d data what we do Sorry. zero and one if you could remember something some stands for rows, some stand for columns. So can we do this one? That df dot this one. This just above function. Apply. And can we find the sum of this on the axis equals one? Sorry, zero. Yeah. So can we find this? Physics has got two eighty nine, chemistry has got three forty one, maths is having three forty three. So what is the thing you are getting here right now is this, 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 and this, right? So, what we'll be doing? What we'll be doing? df dot set index as name. This is your df. Now, if I find the sum, so physics 289 and this all, right? x is equals to 1 would change something what is the problem here none of the name are in the columns none of the name are in there in the columns okay fine the zero you are giving it no n a m e okay 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 okay, okay. so we have applied for more than one number of times so this is the df if it is like this we need to find df dot apply np dot the sum. So these are the things. Okay, if I apply your excess equals to one, so I get this results. If you go with the column wise, row wise, so a has got two fifty three. This is having this, 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 and this all. So now I think you can find the percentage. Right, sum you have got, and now you can also do this divided by 300, multiplied by 100, and unsupported function. Just a minute.
Let me stop the video.